not every community has enhanced 911, which automatically displays the exact address of the caller. Rescuers learn just how valuable that can be when a life is at stake and those in trouble can't tell dispatchers where they're calling from. It was around 10.58 p.m. on July 19, 1990. 911 dispatcher Amy Weidenkopf was nearing the end of her shift at the police department in Ridgecrest, California, when a call for help came in. All I could hear was a dog barking, and I thought I heard a woman whimpering, and then I got disconnected real shortly after that. As soon as I started dialing back, the 911 rang again, and I picked it back up. Emergency services. It was the same address, and at that point, I knew something was going on. This is the third 911 call I've had from this place, and it's an open line every time. And I can hear a dog barking. Hello? Police officer Randy Bias was sent to the scene. On the 911 calls of that nature, where you have uh, one or two hang-ups and then an open line, you have either a disturbance or a medical emergency. Officer Bias arrived within three minutes. I like to get a visual on the house before I actually uh, stop, so I drove past the house. It was all dark inside. Uh, most of the blinds on the front of the house were closed, and the front porch light wasn't on. There's always a possibility that there's uh, a disturbance still going on, whether you hear anything inside or not, or if there was um, a female there by herself and it was possibly a burglar that had gotten into the house, she was able to call 911 and then she hid without talking on the phone. I went ahead and went to check the windows and to see if I could see anybody inside. A second officer, Rick DeMarco, who was already in the area, also responded to the call. The dispatcher was telling us that she could still hear the heavy breathing and the phone being moved. So you're always thinking that somebody's in there still trying to get to the phone to call for help. Hello? After I came back around front and I checked with the neighbors, Officer DeMarco arrived. I've got no noise inside whatsoever. I told him what I had found and what I believe could be possibly going on inside and asked if he'd go around back with me and check the windows and doors once again and to look in to see if he could see anything that I'd possibly missed. And as we came around the back side of the house, the curtains for the master bedroom are open. And we noticed that the bedding for the master bed was messed up. And also that the master bathroom light was still on. So we figured somebody had been sleeping and they were feeling ill, went to the bathroom and maybe had a heart attack or something like that. Before I heard some kind of mumbling that felt like somebody was struggling with the phone. They want you to respond. Because now they can't get a response to the door and it sounded like somebody was struggling with the phone when they first called. I probably want you to come over there and kick the door in. The officers were not allowed to enter the house without approval from their commanding officer, Sergeant Al Mitchell. When you're responding to a call like that, you always want to get there as soon as you can in case there is a medical emergency that requires that you handle it in a timely fashion. It sounds like right now somebody's messing with the phone, but I'm not going to hear the answer. Hello? What do you guys got? I think it's a medical emergency. The dispatcher was telling us that she could still hear, like a breathing, a heavy breathing, and the phone being moved. This doesn't seem to be the easiest one out of all. It's not as secure as the other ones. Yeah, that's good for that. No problem. I can hear some sort of light movement going around the phone. The dog is completely quiet. That was really barking a little bit ago. I can hear you ringing the doorbell. 
with all the racket that was going on, because I could hear them beating on the doors and everything, trying to get somebody's attention, and all of a sudden the dog's quiet, that made me nervous, because I thought somebody's in the house, you know, that doesn't belong there. Did you have any voices at all on the call? That's affirmative. Uh, I heard a female voice the first time it came around because it was an open line, and then it got disconnected. And then it ran back. At this point, what was the time between the call? Maybe about 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah, let's go through that door. While I was trying to break down the door, there was always a sense that, you know, maybe it still is a setup. So you don't want to just break through the doors and fall inside because you'll be, you'll be vulnerable to anybody who's standing there. You feel somewhat safe when you're outside, but once you kick the door open, you have to follow through. The Ridgecrest Police Department, is there anybody in the house? I was really scared for them, and I sort of panicked because I thought, I hope somebody gets on the air soon. Are you there? Can we check any place that someone could be hiding? Bedrooms, bathrooms, closets. All the cushions were turned up on the couch. I made an assumption at that time, I guess, that the people were probably out of town. Okay, great. Hey, Randy. What we got here? Got the phone cord wrapped around him. <laughs> I guess he dialed 911. Hi, Hi. I got untangled with his dog. He's going to choke to death. Are you serious? Is he's that why you said that? He's just, he's just about to choke to death. I got to get him out of this damn cord. I'm going to unplug this off. Okay. Bye. When he told me what it was, you could tell he was laughing, and they thought it was really funny. And the fact that the dog had dialed 911 just made it even funnier. Who <laughs> shot a dog that smart? It's a good boy. We were unable to get the phone cord untangled in his hair and off his neck, so we had to cut the phone cord. Take a look at him. I think she's okay. Anywhere else? The dog oh. uh, didn't even have any serious marks on it, a little redness. I don't see anything. It was tight, though. This is the first time in my 17 years that I've ever encountered an animal or a dog having done the uh, 911 dialing himself. <laughs> He probably walked next to the phone cord, pulled the phone off the counter, and in the struggle to get away, he wrapped the phone cord around his neck. So we're down looking at this dog, and we're trying to figure out how this dog dialed 911. And then we realized the phone had to be an automatic emergency dial, or the dog must have stepped on it. Maybe back to the 27th. Yeah. Well, we have to leave him a note, because when they get home and see the door <laughs> smash, the phone cord cut. I gave um, Sergeant Mitchell one of my cards. And then he wrote a note to the residents stating why we broke in their front door and the circumstances leading up to it and what we found and why their phone cord was cut. Dear sir, <laughs> sorry about your doors, but guaranteed your house was secured. We had our sergeant stand in front of your doors. <laughs> you see, he could actually sign it by printing your name because he's leaving your card. So. Oh, that's right, he's leaving my card. Wait a minute. <laughs> We made sure the front door was locked so nobody else could get through since we did have to break it in. And then uh, walked out through the garage and made it secure and that was it. Nine days later, Art Escobar and his family returned from their vacation to find that Buffy, their 15-year-old Lhasa Apso, had suffered no ill effects from her ordeal. This dog is really, really pampered. She's well-fed, well taken care of. She is part of the family. She's losing her sight, losing her hearing and uh, sometimes she tends to run into walls. But uh, we thought we'd taken all precautions to take care of her when we had someone coming over and checking the house and checking her and feeding her. Decisions, you can't make a decision, can you? 
even though they had to repair their front door. The Escobars are grateful to 911 and the Ridgecrest police officers who answered Buffy's desperate call for help. If they hadn't come in and rescued my dog, I would think that my dog would have choked to death. I think she's got her own little guardian angel watching over her. Any phone calls today, Buffy? Next. I was able to pull the maxi brake. It had slowed the truck down dramatically, but we're still going towards the tree. 